Okay, so LightGPM introduced by a team at Microsoft in 2017, um, a few years after XGBoost, you can find uh, a paper. The paper is called LightGBM, a highly efficient gradient boosting decision tree. Um, and um, in interesting um, comment, in 2022, uh, 2022, LightGBM was dominant out of the gradient boosted decision trees uh, models among calculators. So even already, according to uh, that poll that uh, Christian Francois, <laughs> Francois Chalet said, did, it was already ahead of XGBoost by 2018. More winning uh, models on Kaggle uh, were using LightGBM. So what's super cool about LightGBM? Well, LightGBM uh, takes what we just discussed, that concept John and I just mentioned, about more, it more iterations, more cycles, iterative cycles in a given time, takes it to the next level. So LightGBM, um, this, I don't have a reference for this, but LightGBM is about 20, is considered to be, by some blog I read somewhere online, <laughs> it's considered to be 20 times faster than XGBoost. So it sacrifices accuracy for speed and does so consciously and in a few methods, which we'll talk about now. So it sacrifices some accuracy for a huge gain in speed. So, okay, first thing, the biggest, coolest thing about LightGBM that you need to know is that it doesn't, it, it basically, the trees use histogram-based splits. So think about it, our column with salaries, right? So we have salaries of a thousand people, estimated salaries that we've estimated. The salaries can range from zero, somebody who's currently unemployed, not working, can range to maybe a hundred, I don't know what salaries, maybe, could be 200,000. Like what was the recent salary for somebody doing machine learning at, uh, uh, what's it called, Netflix, like, or some... Or some or anthropic six hundred thousand I saw like crazy yeah the research research. let's say let's say for argument's sake it goes up to one hundred fifty thousand dollars but in in that range you have a thousand different values it can be any like it can be sixty seven dollars and two hundred thirty two dollars and twenty three cents you know like there's there's a huge variability of salary in that there's lots of options that salary you take what if, what if you had not a thousand customers or you had ten thousand customers there's like now potentially 10,000 different values, 10,000 places you could split this data set, all right? But what if you take all of these salaries and you put them into a histogram, into basically you bin them. So you create bins with a $10,000 step. So uh, your first bin is from zero to $10,000. Your second bin is from $10,000 to $20,000, then $20,000 to 30000 and so on. And so you end up, if your salaries are between uh, zero and $150,000 and your bin size is 10, thousand you end up with 150 bin 150 no you end up with 15 bins right 15 bins 10 bins gets you to 100,000 yeah 10 bins uh 15 bins total so you end up with 15 bins and now all of your observations all of your um customers are put into this histogram uh and end up in one of the bins and now you're going to what LightGBM does is it doesn't split on the salary it splits on the bins so now it has only 15 options or 14. If you have 15 bins, you only have 14 options where to split to make that split for salary. And it's so much faster, right? Instead of looking at a thousand different options, you're looking at 15. And if you ha and if you have, let's say, 10,000 customers, instead of looking at 10,000 options, hypothetically, you can only still look at 15. It doesn't change. So this histogram based split, of course, it's less accurate. Of course, you can't now split somewhere in the middle of a bin. It has to be on the borders of a bin. You can only split at split at fifty thousand or sixty or seventy or eighty. You can't split at sixty three thousand dollars. But you're sacrificing accuracy. The whole idea behind LightGBM, in my view, is sacrificing accuracy for speed. That's one of the biggest parts. Uh, the next one is really fun, um, a bit uh, a bit more complex, but really fun to understand. Uh, it's called exclusive feature bundling. And basically, this is reducing the number of columns at all costs. The um, At all costs, as in like, whatever it takes, let's reduce the number of columns. The authors of LightGBM, if you read the paper, they say that most of the data sets available in the real world in businesses have sparse data, have sparse columns. Sparse columns means your column is not uh, it, like a, a normal column, like salary, estimated salary, is a dense column. You've estimated salary for every single observation. A sparse column is that column that mostly has zeros here and there. Sometimes it'll have some value. Um, I was thinking about this uh, last night of how to illustrate this idea that why would most data sets have sparse columns? Well, let's, let's look at a couple examples. 
let's say you have a, a data set which says, okay, these are a thousand customers uh, and you have five uh, sales representatives in your candle store that they can call. Uh, and each sales representative has a column, sales rep one, sales rep two, sales rep three. And uh, you're recording if a customer called, which sales representative did they speak with and for how many minutes. So you're basically sales rep one will have number of minutes for each customer that they spoke with. So it might be five minutes for customer one. It might be 120 minutes for customer number 733, et cetera, et cetera. So, uh, but for most customers, it's going to be zero. There's no chance a sales representative spoke with, they only spoke with maybe out of your thousand customers, they only spoke with 12 over you know, the course of a, a month or something like that. Um, and then sales rep two will have values for other customers and so on. So most column, most of the values in these columns will be zero. And interestingly enough, um, let, let's look at another example just to illustrate the point. You could have, for example, uh, trucks. You could have, uh, like at a, mine, at a mining operation, you have a thousand trucks and they can only do one of three jobs, right? So, uh, or one of five jobs. Uh, and the, the jobs are the columns, right? So then you would have how many, how much time or how many kilograms of ore did that truck um, do on that job? And then there could be another column for maintenance, for example, how much min how many minutes did the truck spend on maintenance and so on, right? So there can be a lot of columns that have mostly zeros and some values. In it. Big surprise that our Australian podcast guest is talking about ore mining. <laughs> yes, yes, that's true. Um, it's quite, yeah, I actually worked on a project relating to that uh, for six months back at Deloitte. It was really fun to go fly out to the middle of nowhere and be on this um, uh, analytics project. Really cool. Putting an occasional one in a column <laughs> that's otherwise all zeros. Yeah, yeah. But like in this case, we're looking at um, columns. Uh, it's because it's easier to talk about regression. We'll look at columns with... Rather than classification columns, we'll look at columns with like um, uh, continuous variable, continuous values. So that was the second example of a sparse column. Uh, you can imagine lots of sparse columns in, in any kind of industry, like medical data sets, like which doctor this patient saw, or which procedures they had. Um, you can imagine uh, columns with um, timesheets of uh, employees and things like that. Uh, you Oh, you had a great podcast uh, with uh, the person from Spotify. Remember that podcast? Uh, phew. Spotify. Oh yeah, um, Eric Bernhardson, the guy who Eric developed Spotify. What uh, episode Mastodon number was that? That was such a good podcast, and I loved um, when he was talking about he's talking about sparse columns because they had like a huge spreadsheet or data set at Spotify where each column is a song and each row is a customer and uh, each uh, value is uh, how many minutes of that song did that customer listen to it it's mostly zeros because you don't listen to all of the songs right it's it's a very sparse data set yeah that was episode number 619 and um, yeah it is definitely a great episode with eric bernhardt and he's an amazing speaker an amazing technologist an amazing entrepreneur yeah i love that episode so there's sparse data sets all over uh, business and industry we don't see them that much in like practical uh, practice tutorials or uh, examples. And so that's why it's important to do labs, like live labs or workshops, which expose you to these kind of real world scenarios. Uh, but they they exist and they're all over the place. So what uh, LightGBM does is it, uh, we're not going to go into detail on this, but basically it combines sparse columns into fewer columns. You might have a hundred sparse columns. It has a method for combining them, even if they're talking about different things. They could be talking about, one could be talking about salaries, another could be talking about kil kilograms, another one could be talking about I don't know, time, it will. It has a way to combine them into, from 100, you might cut it down to five or four columns. And that's very beneficial for gradient boosting uh, decision trees and, uh, and other methods. So it really speeds up um, the decision tree building process. And the way it sacrifices, we talked about sacrificing accuracy. The way it sacrifices accuracy is that in some cases, it will, uh, you, it will combine, like in some cases, a row might have, might be more, populated than other rows. It might have values in a lot of these columns. Well, uh, LightGBM will cut out, uh, drop some of the values in order to achieve this combination. So we'll reduce accuracy by um, allowing data loss, but at the same time, uh, the speed will go up. So that's called exclusive feature bundling.
Nice. Good. Cool. Uh, next one is gradient-based one-side sampling. This is a really cool one. And, um, oh, yeah. I, I guess to like quickly, when you say next one, <laughs> this is it's another... So we've had a few of the key ideas behind light GBM, yeah. which also the etymology of that light gradient boosting machine is what GBM stands for there. Oh, great. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's great. And so light, the idea that it's so much faster, 20 times faster, as you said, uh, relative to XG boost, which already was super fast relative to the vanilla gradient boosting that you went into. And so you have been enumerating most recently the main ideas behind how light GBM is 20 times faster than XG boost. So the first one was histogram based, based splits. Yeah. The first one was histogram based splits. The second one was exclusive feature bundling. And now you're going to go into a third one, which is gradient based one side sampling or GOSS, G O S S for short. Uh, it sounds complex. It's actually very simple. Based on what we discussed, it'll be very easy to, to get your head around it. Basically, um, once you're building a decision tree, you have the gradients that you want to predict and you want to um, reduce the loss in, reduce your loss function. Um, and instead of building a decision tree for all of the uh, observations, right, or instead of sampling 80% at random like XGBoost can do, why don't we be smart about it? And why don't we look at these gradients? So we have a thousand gradients. Let's order them from largest to smallest, and let's take the top 20%, so top 200 gradients, and use them plus of the remaining. So that's a hyperparameter A, and then there's a hyperparameter, we'll call it B. Uh, then you have the remaining 80%, the remaining 800 gradients of them, uh, just to have a representative data set, take a random 10%. So take uh, random 80. So as a result, you will have 200 uh, observations with the highest gradient plus 80 observations, random ones with lower gradients. And you have now a sample of 280. And, and you're going to build a decision tree based on that. And why is that? Uh, like, you, of course, you're losing, sacrificing accuracy. You're using less, fewer rows, but you're gaining a lot of speed. And you're not sacrificing that much accuracy because you're taking the top 20% gradients that you need to improve anyway. So why worry about 100%, you know, the 80-20 rule, right? Let's improve these 20% gradients because they're the highest. So that's what gradient-based, and it's called one-side sampling because, you know, you're taking the highest uh, 20% of the gradients. So in total, if your parameters are 20% and 10%, you'll be end up with 28% of your data set. So that's gradient-based uh, one-side sampling. That's the third main idea behind LightGBM. And the fourth one is called leaf-wise tree growth. So uh, XGBoost and normal gradient boosting have depth-wise tree growth. So you start at uh, level one, the branches, uh, you have an if-else condition, then you have two branches, then you split each one of those into four. So you get four branches in the total, then you split that, you get eight, and so on. So it keeps going from top to bottom. Uh, like uh, at each level, you add these splits on both sides, on all of the sides. Whereas light GBM approaches this in a smarter way. It's like, why should we build such a massive decision tree? Let's do one leaf at a time. So at the start, you split into two branches. Then you have two on each side, one on each side, right? So now instead of splitting both, you only split the one that will give you the best result, the best gain, well, not gain, but the best, um, uh, the best improvement for your model. So the left side or the right side. So you, let's say you split the right side. Now you have uh, three leaves in total. Uh, now, instead of four, now you split one of those leaves. Now, after this split, let's say you split um, the one on the the, mo the most bottom on the left, right? Now you'll have four leaves in total. So you're adding one leaf at a time, increasing the number of leaves by one because you're doing one leaf, as, uh, splitting one leaf at a time. Whereas in the other one, in the XG boost, you're doubling your number of leaves every time. And uh, the way that this can be beneficial is in LightGBM, you'll have a parameter of maximum number of leaves. So your maximum number of leaves might be like 30. And so instead of getting there by doubling every time, you're getting there in a more conscious way and your decision tree will look very different because you're, getting the be you're using the best splits every time. So that was the fourth and final main idea behind LightGPM that makes it sacrifice a bit of accuracy for gain a huge gain in speed.